Good evening, gentle listeners, and welcome to Pirates of Interest with your host, Fred Braun, the captain of the Marvelous. For this week, we'll be sailing to England in the 16th century to learn about the life of Sir Francis Drake, the captain of the Golden Hind. Yes, it's time for the life of Sir Francis Drake. Sit back and enjoy the adventure. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pirates Adventures. I am your host today, Fred Braun, a student of Texas A&M University in the College of Arts and Science. If this is your first time sailing on the Marvelous with us, welcome aboard. Pirates Adventures is a podcast where the Marvelous transported us to different timelines. On the seven seas, where we learned the life of famous pirates and privateers, different pirate ships and different pirate weapons. For today's topic, we'll be adventuring towards the life of Sir Francis Drake. Now, according to an article from the U.S. National Park Service, Sir Francis Drake was an expert sailor, adventurer, privateer, navigator, and a war hero in England. The Spanish, however, viewed him as an illegal traitor who enslaved people and a ruthless pirate. They called him Draco, which in Spanish means dragon, which they classified him as a bogeyman due to his vicious raids. Drake was born in the town of Tavistock, Devon, in March 1544. He is the eldest among the twelve children of Edmund Drake, a farmer, and Mary Murray, a devoted Protestant. When Francis was thirteen years old, he took to the sea on a cargo bark and becoming the master of the ship when he was twenty. He spent his early career honing his sailing skills, and after the death of the captain for whom he was sailing, he became the master of his own bark. Drake was married to two wives and did not have any children from both of them. Francis Drake became a commissioned privateer of Queen Elizabeth I and got the license to look any property and resources that belonged to the Spanish King Philip II. During his time as a commissioned privateer, Drake sailed to Panama. Before sailing to Panama during an earlier voyage, he was stuck in a port in Mexico where he was wounded by the Spanish. It took him a while to recover, and this has caused him to go bitter towards the Spanish in Panama. Drake, when sacked the town of Nueva de Dios, he initially failed to acquire the riches, being dropped off by the Spanish ships, and could not take over the town due to his injuries. But he managed to recover from his wounds and amassed substantial quantities of silver and gold back to Plymouth. When he came back to England, Drake became a trusted explorer of Queen Elizabeth, due to his success in Panama. Happy with his proven powers, Queen Elizabeth commissioned Drake to sail out to the Pacific coast, exploring Spanish colonies and finding a northwest passage to North America. Drake sailed out with five ships straight down to South America. He managed to sail past the Strait of Magellan and reached the Pacific Ocean. Now we all study the age of discovery during our time at history classes, where many explorers tried to find the route to the Pacific. In those attempts, many explorers ended up exploring more of North America, Mexico, and South America. However, Drake had better understanding of the maps, courtesy of the accomplishments of previous explorers before him. According to an article from Totally History, Drake's ship, the Golden Hind, marked his prominence in world history. It was renamed in honor of Sir Christopher Hatton, of the Coast of Arms legacy. The Golden Hind frequently sailed all over the northern and southern coasts of the Pacific, including the rival ports and towns in South America. In 1581. Queen Elizabeth knighted Drake, which gave him the title of Sir. According to Health Research Funding, Drake became the mayor of Plymouth shortly after his circumnavigating voyage around the globe. 
He was also inducted into the House of Commons, then later commanded a part of the Royal Navy, where he became the Vice Admiral. During his time as the Vice Admiral, he was in second in command of the English fleet in the victorious battle against the Spanish Armada in 1588. During his final years, Drake's seafaring career continued in his 50s. According to a source from the Pirate King, in 1595, following a disastrous campaign against Spanish America, he suffered several defeats in a row and unsuccessfully attacked San Juan, Puerto Rico. The Spanish gunner shot a cannonball through the cabin of his flagship but survived. Drake died in 1596 due to dysentery. While again unsuccessfully attacking San Juan, where some of the Spanish ships had soft soldier. For his burial, Drake asked to be dressed in his full armor. I'm guessing that Drake asked that request so he can be buried as a soldier in a lear. He was later buried in a lead coffin at sea a few miles off the coast of Puerto Bello. According to Ernest Great, it is supposed that his final resting place is near the wrecks of two British ships, the Elizabeth and the Delight. Scotland in Puerto Bello Bay. Today, Drake Coffin has never been found, which led to many alternative theories of where Drake's body could have been. Today, Divers still continue to search for the lead coffin. However, there is one theory that a cemetery in Chile that holds the supposed tomb of Sir Francis Drake. Well, thank you for listening to Pirates Avengers and hearing the gold fact of Sir Francis Drake. Well, I'll be seeing you in the next podcast. Bye bye.